Welcome back. We're on chapter 8 now and 8.1 equations of lines in two space. So here you thought you figured out everything about lines in grade 9 and we're starting all over from scratch in a different way trying to find equations of lines in 2 and 3 space. So it's the vector equations of lines we're looking at this time. So let's consider the line through a minus 2, 1 with the slope of m equals 3 over 2. So if you go back to grade 9 or maybe grade 10, you did the standard form. So we're going to do the equation of the line in two different ways. So the standard general form, remember, is just y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And if we were going to do the slope y-intercept form, we would be using y equals mx plus b. So if we were using this equation, so we have a slope, so we have y minus our y1 is 1, y minus 1 equals the slope, 3 halves, x minus minus 1 is plus 2, and then you would multiply everything by 2 here to get rid of this denominator, 2y minus 2 is equal to 3x plus 6, and bringing it all to one side of the equation, you'd have 3x minus 2y plus 8 is equal to 0. And that's your standard or general form. Um, this is the form that you're going to want to get your vectors in because there's something special about it. We'll leave that for another day. If we did the slope y-intercept form now, we would say, well, y here was 1. Y equals 3 halves times x, which is minus 2 plus b. Remember, we're solving for b here. And that would give us minus 3 out to the other side, gives us 4. So b is equal to 4. And then you would write it out as y equals 3 halves x plus 4. So the slope y-intercept form. And you can see that if you multiplied everything by 2 here, you'd have 2y, 3x, and 8, which would give us back to the standard form. So back in the day, if you were to graph this line now, you would look for the y-intercept, which is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you have a slope of 3 over 2. So going the other way, we would go over 2, down 3, and find a second point, and we would draw a line through like this. And Basically, what we've done here is when we're doing the equations using vectors, we want to talk about the slope here, 3 over 2, as the vector 2, 3. Remember, this is 3 over 2 when we say the slope is 3 over 2. That was rise over run. Rise over run. And rise rhymes, rhymes with y's. So y's over x's. Right, the change in y or delta y over delta x. So this is my y, this is my x, and those become the coordinates for your direction vector. So the direction vector for this would be 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And you can see that if I had this direction vector here, um, my line is going to be parallel to that. I feel really badly about making this very sketchy line here. So that means that this line is going to be parallel to this one, right? They're going to be parallel. So if I take any multiple of this and add it to any point on here, then I would be just adding the direction to this. Now I'll make that a little more clear in this next little explanation here. So it says for a vector equation of a line in two space, you need two points, just like you did with in grade 9, right? Two points, you could find the slope. You need two points or a point and a direction vector. Formerly, we used to use slope. So now we're using direction vectors. So if we let P, X, Y be an arbitrary point on the line, we could say that O, P, that's this line here. I should have put it out here so it doesn't look like it's on the Y axis, but you get the idea. So I would say O to P is going to be OA plus AP. And AP here, all this is, is some multiple 
are scalar multiple of this direction vector. So if I took this scalar, uh, this direction vector and I multiplied it by 2 and I added it to OA, I would get maybe something out about here, right? So that would be like two direction vectors longer from A. And all these points on this line could be multiples of the addition of this direction vector. So if I did a half and I went here and I added a half of the direction vector, I would be here, right? From here to here. Or I could do negative one and I would be going this way. So I end up with all these different points on this line by just adding in multiples of this direction vector. And that's what we're going to do to find the um, vector equations of the lines. So in this case, if this point is minus 2, 1, we could say that the direction vector, I'm going to write it as x, y first of all, um, but generally use r, vector r, and we'll do that later on. So the vector x, y is going to be my point, so I have minus 2, 1, and I'm going to add a scalar multiple of the direction vector. And I just showed you how we could get all these other points on this line by just adding a scalar multiple of this direction vector. So if we have this, then if I said to you, find me a couple more points on this line. And you could do that just by substituting in some value for t. So if I said, well, let's just say let t equal 4 then I would have some other point on the line would be minus 2, 1 plus 4 times 2 and 4 times 3. And if I add those together, I would get 6 and 13. So that's another point on the line, 6, and if I went all the way out here, and 13. Or if I let t equal, so you can choose whatever you want, right? But t equal well, minus 3, and you're going to find all these different points on here, an infinite number of points. So that would be x, y is going to be equal to minus 2, 1, minus, so because I have, um, I'm making t minus 3, so I'm going to be adding minus 6 and minus 9. So if I add minus 6 and minus 9, I'm going to get minus 8 and minus 8. That will be another point on the line. So you can find all sorts of points just by changing your scalar um, or your parameter. We call it the parameter t. Parameter t. And the reason we call it parameter is because we're also going to call parametric equations something else and we'll get to that in two seconds here. So if I have a 1, A2 on this line and a direction vector M, M1, M2, then the general equation of the line is going to be A1, A2, so a point plus a parameter times the direction vector. So in the above example, as we already showed, X, Y would be the point plus parameter times direction vector. Find two more points on this line. Oh, I just did that. I thought I didn't have enough room to do it. Okay, so we've already done this. Yay! What are the parametric equations, though? So if I want to find the parametric equations, I would say, so I have x, y. Let's go back to the equation that we had. Minus 2, 1, plus t times 2, 3. So that's the same as minus 2, 1, plus 2t, 3t. And if I want to um, describe x in terms of what we have here now, I just say, well, x is going to be minus 2 plus 2t's. And y is going to be 1 plus 3t's. Right? So this would be, these are what we call parametric equations in two space and in general parametric equations 
are simply x equals a1 plus m1 times t and y equals a2 plus m2 times t. So this is these are parametric equations and they're going to be useful in a little bit here as well. Okay, so that's a parametric equation that is just describing the variables x and y in terms of the point and the slope or the direction vector using a parameter. In this case, I use t. Now, we did already talk about standard equation. The standard equation is also called a scalar equation. Standard equation equals scalar equation. So we're just changing, changing the, the name of it. And that's ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. Okay, so that's pretty easy, isn't it? So let's find the vector equation for the line through a14 and b31. And recall, you need a point and a direction vector. Well, I have two points, but I still need to find a direction vector, and you know how to find that. So if I want a direction vector, that's the first thing we're going to do, find direction vector. I'm going to find a worksheet for you to summarize all of these little things that you need to know and post that. So the direction vector is going to be, so I'm going to do the vector AB. So that's positioning it at the origin and that will be a direction vector, right? So I have three minus one, three minus one, and one minus four. So the direction vector is going to be two minus three. Okay, so now to find the actual vector itself, the line, the equation of the line. So I'd say x, y, or you might put r here. We'll put that in the next line. So x, y equals a point. Well, we can use whatever one we want. So I'll say 1, 4 plus the parameter t times 2 minus 3, where t is an element of real numbers. Okay, so you can use decimals and fractions, but they have to be real numbers. And that will give you that infinite number of points that make up a line. So r is equal to, I would write as r, vector r equals 1, 4 plus t, and leave the parameter t outside. It's very proper to do that. Okay, so let's find two other points using the parametric equations. So the parametric equations, remember, we're just going to describe them in terms of x and y. So x is going to be 1 plus 2 t's. And y is going to be 4 minus 3t. And again, these are your parametric. Get used to the, the language. If your teacher asks you for the parametric equations, you, you don't want to say, oh, I don't remember what they are. It's very easy. Parametric uses the parameter, the parameters. And you're going to use those a lot. Okay, so if I want some other point, I can just say, Okay, well, let's just let, let t equal 2. So that would be x is equal to 1 plus 4, or 5. And y is going to be 4 minus 6, or minus 2. So therefore, 5 minus 2 is another point on the line. Okay, I'm not going to do another one. That's pretty easy for you, I can tell. Okay, and probably the trickiest, which isn't very difficult here, it says determine a vector equation for a line perpendicular to this and passing through this point. Well, you know how to find a line that is perpendicular. Remember perpendicular? So if I gave you the slope, if I said slope was 3 over 4, a perpendicular slope would be minus 4 over 3 or the negative reciprocal. So the only tricky thing you have to remember here is this This is like your slope here, right? So if I asked you what the slope is here, so for this line, you'd say 
the slope is um, 2 over minus 3 or minus 2 over 3. So the perpendicular slope would be 3 over 2. So that means that the vector, the direction vector is going to be, now remember that this is y and this is x. Okay, don't, that's probably the most common mistake. People just say, oh, 3, 2 is the direction vector. No, it's going to be 2, 3. So now I have my direction vector and I want to use this point now. So that means that my vector equation r is going to be 6, 5 plus t times 2, 3. Now get used to writing out the um, parametric equations. So that would be x is going to be, here's my x and here's my x, my new x when I multiply it by some t, parameter t. So x is going to be 6 plus 2t and y is going to be 5 plus 3t. Now often you will be asked something like, is 4 minus, or 4, 1 on the line of this equation? with this equation, I should say, is 4, 4, 1 on this. So you'd say, okay, well, if I put in 4 for x, what do I get for t? Okay, let's do that first. 4 is equal to 6 plus 2t, minus 2 equals 2t, t equals minus 1. So in order to get 4, I would have to multiply t by minus 1. So if I multiply t by minus 1, then if I put in minus 1 here, I need to get 1 for a solution for that to be the y-coordinate, right? So you can't say, well, we'll just multiply this one by, by minus 1 and this one by whatever it does. I would have to, have to multiply it by to get a 1. No, no, they have to both be the same. So this is t equals minus 1. And so if I put in t equals minus 1 here, I have to get y equals 1. So when t equals minus 1, y is going to be 5 minus 3 times 1, which is 2. Well, that doesn't cut it, right? I want 2. I want the answer to be 1. But y equals 1, therefore 4, 1 is not on the perpendicular line. That makes you very sad. Okay, so that's the first introduction to um, finding equations of vector equations of lines in two space. Um, we're going to do three space next and I hope this helped you out. Please present please subscribe, not prescribe, but subscribe, and give me comments, thumbs up, tell me you love me. I love you all. Bye for now.